So, uh, we're going to have a look at some of the questions here. And uh, we're going to have a look at a binary edition question uh, here. And then we'll have a go at a binary subtraction question here. And we'll look at how to do that. Yeah, so to start off with, we're going to have a go at this binary addition question. If we're going to do binary addition, do we start on the left or do we start on the right? right. We start on the right-hand side. So we are going to be starting from this side. We're going to add these values and move it along. So the first bit we've got is we've got a 1 and a 0, leaving us with a 1. Okay, uh, we've got a 0 and a 1, which will give us 1, and then a 1 and a 1, which will give us 2. Now, we can't use a 2 in this context because the largest number we can hold is 1. So it's 0 or 1. So what we'll do is we'll carry, but we'll carry over here those two values, and we'll do that by writing the value, um, in fact, maybe i use a different color, 1 got carried here. So now when we're adding, now because we've carried two over, we need to actually remove the two from there. Remove the two from there, leaving us with a simple uh, zero left behind. Now we've got one, zero, and one, which will give us the value two. Again, we cannot store that two because the largest number we can make is one. So we'll carry that two over by writing a one here. And what it would do is it would take away and it will leave us with what here instead? What will it leave us with? Zero. So it will leave us with zero there. Then we've got a new condition here. We've got a one and a one and a one, which will give us, I've done the count, it's three. Now, being that we can't go higher than one, we can't do two, we certainly cannot do three. So we'll carry two of them over and put them over here. However, that's going to now leave us with what behind? Oh. Just one behind, yeah. So three take away two means that we're left with just a simple um, one there. Whoops. For our next question, we've got, sorry, for that one, we've got one, zero, and one. What was going to happen as a result? It would be two. How do we deal with that two? Please, yeah. We put a zero down there. We carry one of it over here and put a zero at the bottom. We've got the same situation again where we've got one, one, and one, which would make us three. We carry one, we carry two of them over by writing a one here leaving us with one, and it's done. One, one, and zero, giving us two. And the way we deal with that is carry one over here, and again, leave us with, that's the worst one I've ever seen in my life, uh, zero, and then finally, one. And so the answer would be there. Okay, so now we're gonna look at how we can do subtraction. Now, truthfully, there's actually two ways you can do this, but the, I think the way that's gonna help us get some practice in is that you, what you do is you add a negative number. So what we'll do is we can find out uh, the value of this top one here. And then we can make that number the negative version. We can get the negative version of that number, add them to each other, and that gets us there. So in this case, we'd say it is, uh, we do the grid. And so the grid would be, um, the grid would be from 1 to 28. The first thing I'm going to actually do is make the negative value of this number. And that works with a simple recipe. The first bit is I just put the positive of it down. So I'm going to write the positive of it. So I'll just copy it over. 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1. Does anybody remember what the recipe is to make it to a negative number? Add 1. No, flip it. And flip, one. add 1. Yeah. When you flip it, it puts it in something called 1's complement. So every time there's a 1, it becomes a 0. Yeah, every time there's a 0, it becomes a 1 like so. And then what do I say I'm going to add to it? One. So I'm going to go like this in case it carries anywhere, which it won't. We add, what we're going to do is we're going to add this number, which I'll be honest, I could have drawn straighter, to this number, and it's going to give us the value. Because it's two complement in this case, actually that's not positive 128, what would it be? Negative. Yeah, that's how it, negative 128, exactly. And you can see it starts with a one, so it is a negative number. So that's the negative of the number. Then I'm going to write that number underneath here, because that's what I want to add. Because basically, I've made that now negative. I'm going to add that to the negative of that number, which will give us that number, take away that number. So I'm going to put the other number down there. We're now going to add this number, which was the negative of this, to this number, which is here, thus giving us our value. Start from left, we'll start from right. Start from the right. So 1 and 1 is going to give us... 
zero, carry the one, right? What we're going to do now? What we're going to do now? One and carry the one. Zero and carry one. One. Zero. Zero and carry the one. And one and carry one. And that's sort of lost to time, and that's our value taken. Okay, so that's subtraction for us there. Can I go back to... There you go. Cool. Okay, so we're looking at converting between a... Uh, binary number here and we need to convert it to hexadecimal as we know one hexadecimal digit is worth four bits so what we can say is that first four we convert to a hexadecimal digit the next four the next four the next four so actually there will be one two three four hexadecimal digits from that and what we can say is for one one and one and one it would make so for this, for this one here, that's going to make one eight plus a four plus a two plus a one, which would make, um, so an eight and a four and a two and a one, that's going to make 15. But in hexadecimal, we don't call 15, 15. We call 15 F. F. So the answer to that would be F. For the next, uh, four bits or nibble, it's zero, 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 which would be zero. And in hexadecimal, that would be known as, not a trick question. What well, is it a trick question? What is it gonna be? Zero, exactly right. And then for the next one over here, it's the next four bits or next nibble. It's one, four, one, two, and one, one, which would be Seven is exactly right, and in hexadecimal, we will call that seven is exactly right. No need to be nervous, you'll, you'll record it forever. And then, there's the last one, so the answer is going to be three. And in hexadecimal, three. so I was going to answer the question, I would say it's three zero zero three seven zero F. And if I was going to actually indicate what that's going to be, that would be lots of one lots of 16, lots of 256, and then lots of 4,000 and something. Well, you can figure it out on your own time. Cool? Yeah. Right, guys, uh, we are now doing a question on a uh, floating point with a five-bit mantisa uh, into its complement, which means we can have negative numbers for it, and a three-bit exponent also into its complement, which means we can have a negative exponent making a small number, a positive number, uh, a bigger number making a bigger um, number. We've got to calculate the value from this thing here. So we said that, uh, let's just to confirm, this bit over here, that is the, what is this? Exactly right. Thank you so much. And then this one over here, that is the... Exponent. Yeah, we're going to have to rely on you, I think, on this one. <laughs> Exponent. Okay, and I want to turn that from... Binary ones and zeros into the denary number and the question is like how do we go about doing that? So um, I think the easiest way is you'd say it's zero The dot is always bef between the first two assuming it's been normalized 0 0.1001 and then actually it's times 2 to the power 0 1 0 and if we look at the exponent since it's in twos complement we can see that actually it's times by uh, two. Nope, I did not want to do that. Times by two. All right, so um, well answered, thank you so much. It's moved two, so we're gonna move uh, this dot two times to our right, which will put us in fixed point. So it would actually make the number one zero dot zero one. And since it's in fixed point, we can now put out the bits, the units at the top. So we can say that it's lots of ones, lots of twos, of halves, and a quarter. Mr. Patel, what number do you reckon that is then? So, since we've got two lots of one, zero lot, sorry, two lots, one lot of two, zero lots of one, no halves, no quarters, our number we end up with is 2.25, and there we have converted. Yay, exactly. 
Okay, guys, we are now doing one of the final kind of questions we can get, which is how we normalize a number. As a quick recap, normalizing a number in this context um, depends on whether it's a positive or a negative number. If it's a positive number, we hold it a certain way. And if it's negative, we hold it another way. If it's a positive number, we need to make it 0 0.1 and then something. And if it's negative, we have to make it 1.0 and something. And just looking briefly at these questions, we can see that this number is going to be what? Positive or negative? Positive. Quite right, Treasure. It is a positive number. And by process elimination, since we've got one of the most, the one at the bottom is going to be... Negative. Thank you, Treasure. So uh, let's quickly answer these questions then. So remember... The dot is always between the first two. So currently, it will go 0 0.0011. And then um, I'll put it in here. That it's times 2 to the power 0010. And remember, it's in 2's complement. So that's negative 8, 4, 2, and 1. So currently, it's times 2 to the power 2. Now, which way do I move the point to put it into normalized form? Yes. We're going to move it right. So we're going to move it right how many times? Twice. Twice. Now this is the bit, this is, be honest, one of the bits where people can easily fall down. So first of all, go 0 0.11. Can I just leave it like that? Or do I need to include more information? Because there's a five bit mantisa. So what do I need to pad with? Quite right. So that's successful. Now this is the one place where we can go. We know we need to move the exponent by two now, don't we? Do we add two or take away two? That's the bit where we can get stuck sometimes. Now I want you to, if we just remember this, which is a bigger number, that one or this one? The bottom one, right? So the bottom one's a bigger number. If the mantis is becoming bigger, exponent has to become smaller. So it started off as two, right? You can see it's two here, and we've moved two, so what is the exponent gonna become? Zero. Zero. Yeah, right? So in fact, actually, it's in fixed point because now, by moving it there, we have moved it into uh, zero, being that it is in fixed point. And now, if I wanted to answer at the end, uh, did you see the format you received it was here? Yeah. So I would end it in the same way. So I'd actually end it. I wouldn't even put the dot there. I'd be like zero, one, one, zero, zero. Zero, 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 just in case. So, like, if the examiner's down there, they can see that you have... Beautiful. There you go. Yeah. Okay, let's do the next one, then. So, we've already said that this is going to be negative. It being negative means that it's going to end up as this. We need to get into that format, 1.0 something. So, again, I'm going to write it out. 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, times 2 to the power of... 0, 1, 1, 0. And remember again, it's in 2's complement. So it's going to be written like that. And the dot is where on here it is between the first two. So, Kyle, I can see that you have a burning ambition to answer this question. So that's lovely. To make this normalized, where will I have to move that point? Uh, right. Twice. Right. So it seems counterintuitive because it seems like moving it this way and then essentially losing those two ones seems like we're going to lose information. But as we know, for a negative number, if we have additional ones, remember I proved that before, it actually stays the same value. So actually, that's the way to play it. So writing underneath, we'd write that as 1.00, and those ones have been lost on the left. Like before, what do I need to do? Because it's a 5 bit mantisa. Pad it with the extra two zeros. And before it was times 2 to the power of 6. six. The matisse has become bigger or smaller? Smaller. Huh? Smaller? No. Bigger. Bigger. Matisse has become bigger, so the exponent has to become smaller. smaller. By how much? Two. By 2. So now my mantisse is going to, my exponent rather, is going to be. Four. Yeah? Zero, one, zero, zero. And if so, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do the same thing I did before. I'm going to write it out consistently. So the answer is one, zero, 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 one, zero, zero. 
And that is the answer done beautifully, yeah. exactly. Uh, so we have, we're taking questions from the audience. Um, we've got this question here where we need to normalize this value uh, into, uh, well, into a normalized format. Can we see why it's not normalized right now? Because it's a positive or a negative? It's a negative. It's a negative number. So if it's negative, we need it to be in what format? 1.0. Yeah, so that it should be 1.0 something, and it is not. So we need to move that point, this point here, to make it 1.0. So where are we going to move it to? One, two, three. Across. One, two, three, in that direction. It's going to get us where we want to be. So I'm going to rewrite that. 1.0110. Now we started off with an 8-bit mantisa. To be logically consistent, we need to pad and do three, uh, three, zero. three zeros at the end, yeah, to make it, yeah. Now, this is the bit that always can trick us up. Remember, the exponent will be in two's complement, so negative 8, 4, 2, 1. So the exponent right now is 6 originally. By moving the arrow three times to the right, am I making the mantisa bigger or smaller? Bigger. Mantisa becomes bigger, exponent must become smaller. So I'm doing I, I'm trying to do the actions, you see, that's it. You know? And then we start off with 6, so that means we now have... Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's very good. And then zero, zero, one, one. Done. That's how we finished. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I, I did a, okay, that I, uh, I should record this. So, um, question was asked what happens if we have this six bit Mantisa, this three bit exponent, uh, and we need to normalize? And it's still two's complement, so that's minus four, two, and one. And over here, uh, Actually, technically, that has to be a zero here if it's positive. So that would be one, two, four, negative eight, half, a quarter, and an eighth. Anyway, point being, if I want to normalize, which way do I need to go? It's positive number. Do I need to go right or do I go left? Have to go left. How many times? So once, twice, three times. So 0 0.101011, 0 .01011. this is a good question because it lets us deal with two problems. First of all, my ability to write zeros. There you go. What's the problem with the Mantisa? Well, how many bits have I used? Seven. So, um, so because it's a seven bit Mantisa, we cannot retain all that information. Do I cut off from this side or this side? Right side. So, yeah, absolutely. So we're going to lose this bit of data here. So we've lost, because yeah, because the mantisa can't, I guess to make it okay, we'd have to have a seven bit mantisa to retain it. Problem number one, but we've solved it. And so when we got it back, it wouldn't be quite as accurate. Because we've moved it, the points move three times to the left, as the mantisa becomes smaller, so is this become smaller or bigger? Smaller. That is a bigger number, isn't it? Um, Remember, the trick, if you're ever in that situation, and I get there, if you're like 124.9 versus 1.249, right? I moved it. Which one's bigger? Yeah, and so if you turn it back into denary, it's really easy to see. And in binary, you can just mess with your head sometimes. But you can see that's what we've done, right? By moving it to the left. So because we've made the mantisa smaller, what has to come to the exponent? It has to become bigger. And what is the exponent right now? What do we need to become? That's a problem, isn't it? We can't make it up to six. So you know what we are? We're stuffed. We can't. <laughs> but it's an interesting point that you've asked. So essentially, in the same way that when we have an overflow error, the way to correct it is to add additional bits. Yeah. We're saying to actually correctly hold this, what are we going to need? Yeah, it's not going to work with a three-bit exponent as we are right now. So essentially, we're saying that there is insufficient number. We need, because we both need more mantisa for accuracy, but we also need more exponent, because what happens when you have more exponent bits? Range. So we need more exponent for range as well, yes? And without those two, we basically, this is one of those rare times we've actually got problems in both directions. So we just need a bigger 
maybe, I guess we need to have maybe an 8-bit Mantisa, although 7 would do technically. And then how many more bits for the exponent? If I had one more bit, would it work? So we'd have, yeah, minus 8, 4, 2, 1. You'd need one more bit for the exponent. It would get you there, wouldn't it? Because you could have 6, and you could store 6. Yeah, because that's what I got. We're taking more questions from the audience. Uh, we need to convert this floating point 8-bit Mantisa 4-bit exponent into denary. Currently, where would we expect the point to be? Between the first two. So it's here, right? The exponent is 4. Essentially, we need to put it back into fixed point. For it to be back into fixed point, all we're talking about is having that bit there come back to 0. So we need the exponent to come from positive 4 to 0. So we're making the exponent smaller. So that if the exponent's becoming smaller, the mantisa has to become... Absolutely. And does it become bigger by moving the point to the right or to the left? That's right. That's confusing. How many times can you move it to the right? Once, twice, three times, four times. That is, doesn't look good. Anyway, one, zero, 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 one, dot, one, one, one. Is that right? I feel like... Okay, thank you. Uh... And it's in fixed point, so we need the units. So I'm going to put up here, one, two, four, eight. This is where you could go wrong. What's the last one? Good man, that's exactly right. Yeah, minus 16. And then uh, on the half, exactly right. And now we just have to go, so negative 16 plus one makes negative 15, plus seven eighths makes negative 14 and an eighth. I just failed to write eight. We all have our problems. Do you see how I got there? Yeah? Answer your question? Hooray. 